Now we're going to start building out the QWERTY Hancock keyboard. So we're going to stop our app. We're going to say npm i QWERTY Hancock. We're going to install that. We're going to create a new component. It's going to be keyboard.js in here, R-A-F-C-E. And also once it's installed again, we can say npm start to start it back up. In here, we're going to import our CTX from dot dot slash context slash store. And we're also going to import the use context hook from React. And up here at the top of our app, again, we're going to do app state and update state. We're going to grab those out of use context and pass it CTX. Now we'll import QWERTY Hancock from QWERTY Hancock, like that. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna make a div with an ID of keyboard, and we're gonna grab onto this div in a minute using that ID, but we need it to be rendered first in order for us to be able to grab onto it. So we're gonna also import use effect from React. Now we're gonna do our use effect, and we're gonna pass it as the second argument, an empty array because we only want it to run this code once after keyboard first renders and we know that this div with an ID of keyboard is there. So we're gonna say const keyboard equals new QWERTY Hancock. And we're gonna pass QWERTY Hancock an object that's gonna specify what we want this keyboard to look like and what ID it's gonna to attach to. Now in here we'll specify the ID by just saying ID and pass it a value of whatever you set for the ID that you're attaching to in the div down there. And then we're also gonna set the width for it, and this will just be in pixels, and same thing with the height. So I'll put 70 for the height. And we can tell it how many octaves we want it to range. I'm just gonna say two for now. We can tell it what note to start on with start note. And for right now, I'm gonna just do C4. And then let's save that. Let's import this into app.js and then we'll render it. So there's our keyboard. Now you'll notice that the first two rows of letters on your keyboard will control the keys on our QWERTY Hancock keyboard and you can also use your mouse but you can use your first two rows of letters on your keyboard and that works no matter where we're focused or what we click on in the window it always will work to control the QWERTY Hancock keyboard. So you can see how this is working if you go into your node modules go to QWERTY Hancock, go to dist, go to QWERTY Hancock JS and what it's doing is when you run new QWERTY Hancock in order to set up your keyboard is it's grabbing onto the global object or the window of our entire app. And it's going to set that as the value for this variable right here, global window. And then down below, it's adding two event listeners onto it. So there's the key down, which is gonna fire this function every time a key is pressed down, and it's gonna pass in what key it is. And one for key up, which is going to fire every time a key is released. And it's gonna, again, know which key it is. The way we're going to tell QWERTY Hancock what we want it to do when a key is pressed down on our keyboard is we're just going to add a method onto keyboard and it has to be named key down. And whatever we put here, QWERTY Hancock is going to hook this up to that event listener on the global object. And QWERTY Hancock is going to pass in the note that was pressed and the frequency of that note. So in here, we're going to make our action, we're going to give it a type of make osc and the payload is just going to be an object with the note and the frequency on it. Similarly to tell QWERTY Hancock what to do when a key is released on our keyboard we'll add a method of key up and again we're going to get the note and the frequency. We'll say update state pass in our action it's going to be a type of kill osc it's dramatic and it's going to be a payload of an object with a note and the frequency passed in. And a quick styling note before we go make some cases in the reducer for these actions that we just made. 
You can also change the color of the white keys, the black keys, the keys that are currently pressed down, and the border between them. But you have to spell color like a British person. These are some colors that I just came up with based off of what we already have in the app SAS file. Now it just looks a little bit more like the rest of our app. Back in our store.js inside of our reducer, we're going to make some cases for the actions that we just made. So the first one's going to be make ask. And inside here, we're going to need the note and freak, and we're getting those off of the action payload. So we can just grab those there like we did with the ID and value. And then for right now, we're just going to console log make ask note and frequency, and then just pass note and freak there. And then we need to return the state. Just going to copy and paste that and make one for kill ask. And instead we'll say kill ask note and freak there. Back in the app, open up your console, click the app anywhere in the background, and press down on the letter A and hold it. You're going to see there's the console log statement from our make ask reducer action. And you can see it's giving us the note of the fourth octave C and the frequency of 261.62 something something hertz. And then if you release the letter A, you'll notice there's our kill ask reducer console log statement, and it's showing us the same note and the same frequency. It fires twice sometimes. Um, you'll notice if you press it again, now it does make ask twice, and when you release, it does kill ask twice. Apparently this is actually some expected behavior caused by the React strict mode that's wrapping your entire app and was created by the big brain geniuses who make React and its purpose, at least here, is to make it more obvious if your reducer is not written in a purely functional way. So if your reducer is impure, it's going to make it much more obvious by running your actions twice. And that sounds like it would hurt performance, but it actually is only going to do that when it's in development. When you've deployed it and it's in production, your reducer is only going to be called once. Next, we're going to take a look at using the note and frequency that we're getting from make ask and kill ask to make an oscillator and play it when someone presses a key down on our keyboard. And then when they release that key, we're going to use it to stop that oscillator.